All right, folks, let's get into the wonderful world of networking. Uh, so welcome back to PCOM 300 Professional Communication with me, Dr. Matt Barton. And today we will be talking all about uh, networking, networking 101. We'll be talking about, first though, about how to build a board of advisors, in this case, a personal board of advisors, uh, a collection of mentors and life coaches and just people that will help you out and how to uh, maintain that and cultivate it. And then we'll give some uh, pretty good tips, I think, for how to work a room, how to go to conventions, how to go to conferences, how to introduce yourself to people, uh, how to exchange a business card, how to follow up with them, and so you can start building and really cementing your professional network. So it's, it's really, really good information. And, and again, just something, uh, you know, I've been doing this 20 plus years, and I found plenty of new stuff in Pierce that I'm excited about. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to my next conference or something. Uh, where I could start uh, experimenting with some of the stuff that she puts into this chapter. So uh, I know you liked it too. Okay, so to get us started uh, thinking about this, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, so if you could go to anyone in the world for advice about your career, who would you choose and why? So ponder on that. Give me about 100 words or so, and then we will continue. All right, so hopefully you had some fun with that. Uh, okay, so your professional contacts are your most valuable investment. <clears throat> and I use this word investment because, as we'll see, it's not just you introduce yourself to somebody and you're done. Uh, instead, this is a relationship uh, that you need to put some time into and maybe, maybe even some money into in the form of you know, going to coffee, going to lunch, and things of that sort, uh, to try to keep a healthy uh, professional network. It's, it's almost like a garden that you're growing, right? You can't just go away for several months and come back and expect your garden to be okay. Um, you need to work on that. You know, keep it well watered, fertilized, you know. I don't know how far we need to go with this metaphor, but <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, because you really, you never know who you might meet and how they might prove useful um, or how you might prove useful to them. Uh, connection at the right place at the right time. I mean, it's just really a good idea to try to get in the habit of uh, taking a Will Rogers advice here. Uh, so he says, he said, I never met a man I didn't like. You know, it's a really, I love that expression. You know, just to be completely unprejudiced, uh, completely open-minded. You, you never know um, what somebody really has to offer. Uh, you know, I love that, uh, that, that quote by Will Rogers. And so hopefully we could find ways to apply this in professional communication, right? So, um, again, being open-minded, being willing to meet new people, uh, being willing to help others because, uh, <laughs> you know, what what goes around comes around. Uh, let's, let's put it that way. Uh, so if you're a good person and you're friendly and you make uh, contacts and you give back, a lot of times that will come back and uh, reward you. All right, assembling your personal board of advisors. Now, this is a study uh, that was done at MIT, uh, Sloan Review, and it's a scientific, you know, MIT, you know, they know if, they know a few things about science there. <laughs> and so what they did, it was really interesting. Uh, they uh, surveyed hundreds of these Hall of Famers, so literally Hall of Fame, uh, but also people that were just sort of at the considered the best in these different fields. And they, uh, I guess, talked to them about the influential people in their life. You know, they're sort of the go-to people uh, for various problems they might have or, you know, if they need advice and feedback. And they, they compiled all that data and they realized that they're connected in sort of interesting ways. So I just put a picture here of the diagram from that study. It's a it's kind of complicated Venn diagram. So it's a series of circles, and the circles aren't just separate, you know, uh, individuals' circles. Uh, they actually overlap. So if you look here, uh, you can see how they, they overlap and bleed into each other. So they're not really discrete categories. Uh, they're actually related in pretty interesting ways, but, it, but it's on a continuum uh, that goes across from uh, outer uh, to inner. And on the left, we have psychosocial support and some mental, uh, you know, social well-being, I suppose, self-esteem, um, 
uh, things of that sort. Uh, over to the career support, which is, you know, of course, germane to your career goals. And then all the way to the right, they put the role model. Uh, so somebody that uh, may, you may, may, maybe don't, you don't know them personally, but is somebody you look to um, to kind of inspire you to do better <laughs> or to, uh, you know, try to keep going towards your goal. Uh, so I, I really like this breakdown. Uh, I think Pierce is probably right in she says, you know, don't don't get too fixated about having all six be different people. It's okay to have, uh, you know, the same person do a couple of, of the roles. Uh, but I do think it's useful just to be, in general, you know, think about your own life and the people in your life and who you might go to for advice and uh, who really seems to know what they're talking about and who really seems to care about you. <laughs> and uh, once you figure this out, you you might realize, like I did, you know, I've kind of been neglecting some of these some of these folks, like my uh, you know my old uh, mentor from USF, uh, Joe Moxley here. You know, I probably call him like once a year to catch up. Uh, but you know, maybe it would behoove me to kind of work on that uh, connection a little bit more. You know, it's, it's like coming back to our garden metaphor again. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that all the different parts of your garden are getting enough sunlight. You know, enough attention, enough water, and uh, so on and so forth. So. It's, it's a really good chart. I really enjoyed this. Yes. Keep and maintain your personal advisory board as you walk through life. Now, so what happens with this, let me just put it this way. So if you are a company or a, a university or a politician, they have uh, advisory boards, or sometimes they call them cabinets in the cases of uh, politics. Uh, but it's people that are selected because they have different areas of expertise, uh, they are well known, you know, in their fields, and they, you know, the, the the goal is you want somebody that, or you want a, a board of advisors that aren't just yes men, you know, what they call yes men, people that just agree with you because they're intimidated by you, <laughs> uh, or agree with each other all the time and are always uh, unanimous. Uh, what you really want are people that um, are different. In diverse, you know, they have different opinions, uh, they have different walks of life, different life, to, different life experiences. Who know you? Some it's good sometimes to have people that know you really well, uh, but it's also good sometimes to have some distance, right? So somebody can give you more a more objective opinion, less biased uh, opinion. Uh, so that's why it's important to have to be thinking in terms like this, and so you kind of have this this gamut of advisors from all the way from like your significant other, your mother, your mother-in-law, <laughs> you know, people that know you really, really well and you know, totally have your back, uh, all the way to people that you really don't know all that well, but who have a lot of expertise in the career field and can give you, um, you know, really solid advice. Now, as far as networking goes, you know, I have to mention this book. Uh, she doesn't mention it, Pierce doesn't, but it's one of the most famous books ever. <laughs> it's, I think it's the self-help book uh, par excellence. <laughs> it's a How to Win Friends and Influence People uh, by Del Del Carnegie. And I'm going to speak from personal experience. I mean, this, he tells you in here basically how to, uh, and sort of the same stuff that's in this chapter about how to meet people and how to, uh, you know, I don't want to say how to get people to like you or how to win popularity contests. You know, it's, it's not quite that brazen. But there is a lot of great advice in here and, uh, you know, basically just, just ways to improve your charisma, you know, especially if you're like me. You know, when I, before I read this book, you know, I was, you know, people would say you're kind of a jerk, Matt. You know, you, nobody really likes you. <laughs> you're kind of, kind of unpopular. You're kind of a dork. You know, I was always getting told things like that. You're kind of arrogant. You know, I was, I was told that many times. So I said, okay, uh, well... If I'm such a nerd, maybe there's a book that I can read that will tell me how to be less nerdy. <laughs> you know, I guess, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, think of that what you will. Uh, so I went to the library looking for books, and this was the one that was recommended. And, you know, and sure enough, I read this, and there's some homework in there that Carnegie gives you about, uh, you know, stuff like don't complain, um, you know, show genuine interest in other people, you know, just kind of basic stuff, but it was just amazing. You know, I just, I love 
telling people about that book because I, <laughs> you know, most people tell me now, they're like, Matt, you're, you know, I really like uh, your class. You're a very uh, fun guy to hang out with. You're very laid back. Um, you know, you're, you, you seem like the kind of guy I, you know, people can trust, you know. <laughs> and I, I'm always kind of tempted to say, well, that's really just Dell Carnegie. <laughs> I'm still just the same old jerk. <laughs> uh, I'm being a little bit facetious there. But, uh, you know, I really do recommend th this book. You know, especially if you were uh, in that situation like I was, where you have a hard time, uh, you know, getting to know people and, uh, you know, being told you're a jerk. <laughs> uh, you know, read uh, Dale Carnegie, he can help you with that problem. Uh, all right, Pierce's tips. Now, here's what Pierce is talking about. And this is, by the way, about the um, networking conventions. Uh, so when you go to these big conferences, or maybe you're at the a new job site and you need to get to know people or I guess you know this if you go to a party uh, again a lot of these conferences they will have uh, lunches they'll have dinners they'll have uh, sometimes uh, for lack of a, I guess a cocktail party I guess is the term for that <laughs> and so there's all these events where you're expected to there's not a speaker it's just a bunch of people in a big room uh, and you're expected to uh, you know go around introduce yourself meet people you know, mingle, uh, you know, whatever you want to call that. Uh, that's the purpose of those uh, events. So her tips are absolutely golden. Now, so the, the first one she says is do some homework before the event. So if you could find out who is going to be there or who might be there, uh, that could be very useful because uh, then you can learn a little bit about them and go up. And if you do go up and introduce yourself, you could say, well, I've read your book or I saw your, I heard about your talk. Uh, or I, I heard that you uh, work for this company and you know a little bit about the company. Uh, so you don't just have to go up there cold, um, you know, not knowing what to say or knowing anything, anything, anything about them. Uh, two, create your own elevator speech. So a lot of times people will ask you, well, who are you? You know, uh, what do you do there at St. Cloud State? Or, um, you know, what, what do you, uh, have you written any books or, you know, whatever the case may be. So the... The, this is a really good tip because I've been in the situation where somebody asked me something like that, and I just I'm not used to being asked that question. Uh, you know, don't go to a whole lot of these type of events, let's say. So you're just kind of uh, tongue-tied and you're kind of uh, stumbling over your words trying to come up with something to say. So this is a really good tip to just kind of think about well, what are some basic facts about me that I should that I want to talk about to people in you know maybe the classes I'm teaching here or the last maybe some of the research that I've been pursuing maybe some of the um, technologies I'm using in the classroom you know just just whatever the case may be uh, the point is to plan that out a little bit uh, so that when you're in the when you're asked the question uh, you have a ready answer that you can easily just deliver and it's nice and smooth uh, the third tip was about when to arrive and so good. Maybe the party starts at seven o'clock. Uh, she says, "Don't be there early, I guess, and <laughs> don't be the first person there." Uh, she likes to show up about thirty minutes late, or thirty minutes after the uh, event starts. You know, I don't, I don't quite know what to make of this. I'm probably, I am kind of guilty of being uh, not first necessarily. <laughs> if it says seven o'clock, I'm usually there at seven o'clock. I don't really know what. Uh, what's wrong with that? But maybe I should uh, maybe I should apply Pierce and see what happens. <laughs> uh, four, set a goal of meeting at least three new people at each event. I think this is really good. You know, I love this idea of kind of making a game out of it, if you will. Uh, so I think just the three is a pretty good number. Uh, just and she also mentions there how if you if you do this and you've met the three people. Uh, then you feel a little bit better about, well, I've accomplished something, you know, I've met my goal, it's, it's okay to leave now. <laughs> so you don't walk away feeling like you didn't get any, any use out of this uh, networking event. Uh, so I think that's pretty solid, too. You know, I like to play a, a little game like this. I, I read about um, workplaces, and they talked about how when people go to, uh, or people don't feel like they belong somewhere, if nobody ever notices them or says hello or, or greets them. So I just kind of made a point of when I'm walking to class or walking to school, you know, if I'm walking around campus and I'm going from like point A to point B, <laughs> I, I make a little challenge to myself to see if I can 
say hello or hi or good morning or whatever to at least three people and I get extra I get myself extra points <laughs> if it's people I don't know so if it's somebody I've never seen don't know who they are if I can uh, get their attention and say oh hi, hi good morning uh, something like this and uh, then I give myself points to that and I feel like in my own small way I'm kind of making this workplace or this campus a little bit friendlier to people um, because that's you know, that, that seems to be true, right? If, if you feel like you don't really, you're kind of feeling awkward, like maybe I don't belong here, maybe this isn't the where I'm supposed to be or something like that, uh, here comes this guy, he says, good morning, you know. <laughs> Who knows, maybe it brightens somebody's day. <clears throat> uh, let's see, fifth, step up to the singles. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of easy. This is an easy way to connect to uh, the fourth goal here. Now, so a lot of times you'll see these groups of people, the triads. You know, if you get into uh, communication studies, there's names for all this, this phenomena. Uh, but people tend to have these various formations, these patterns they get into as they're standing around in this room. Uh, but there will always be at least a few people just by themselves, nobody to talk to, looking kind of lonely, <laughs> looking a little bit desperate maybe. Uh, so, yeah, it's always a good idea. It's this kind of easy one. Hi. Uh, you know, she gets some advice on what to say, but... Uh, hi, you know, I'm Dr. Barton, or Matt, or whatever, you know, depending on what, what the conference is. And they will undoubtedly appreciate that, uh, so they don't just have to stand there alone. You know, you've really uh, uh, probably made somebody feel a whole lot better about being there at that networking event. Uh, six, mix and mingle and mix some more. Uh, so try not to get stuck with one person. Yes, it's, it's always tempting. <clears throat> you know, and sometimes I've noticed this. You go to one of these networking events with, some, with a colleague, let's say, or a good friend of yours, and you'll tend to just stand there talking to your friend. Um, why are you there? You, you can see this guy anytime. <laughs> you, know, you can talk to this guy any anytime. Uh, why are you uh, talking to him uh, for like half an hour when you could be out trying to meet new people and, and get to know some people, <laughs> talk to people that you don't get to see on a regular basis? Uh, so that's the goal there. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, you yeah, just have to kind of just politely say this. You know, I'd like to, you know, it's nice talking to you. I'll be right back. I'm going to try to walk around a little bit, see if I can meet some new people. Uh, seven, don't be afraid to join a convo conversation. Uh, hey, do you mind if I join you? So it could be that you're the person alone. You could be the single, right? So you might be that person against the wall. Everybody else is talking in these groups. You're all by yourself. <laughs> So, so you, I guess you could wait for that good Samaritan to come over there and talk to you, but I think seven is right. You know, just even if these people tend to be having a conversation already, uh, you can go over and say, hey, do you mind if I join you? And yeah, I, I, she says that she's never had anybody turn her down. <laughs> I never have either. Uh, they're usually just perfectly fine with you coming over there. I mean, they're there to meet people, right? I mean, if, if, if they... If they didn't want to meet people, why would they be there? <laughs> uh, eight, uh, exchange information with everyone, uh, business cards or emails. Now, this is a good one because a lot of times you think you'll remember the name, but it kind of goes in one ear and out the other sometimes. If you have these cards, and I always, you know, I have cards as a professor here. You can have your own cards made. It's not like it's expensive or anything. You can have some fun with it. Uh, but just to have your email on there or your you know, however you want to be reached. You don't necessarily want to put all your personal details on it, uh, but it's nice. You know, it's a good way to, you talk to somebody, meet them, and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, if you ever want to get together for coffee or lunch or you want to talk some more about that project, you know, here's my card. So you give them your card, they give you their card or email, and that way you can, you can have the information because you probably will forget it <laughs> uh, otherwise. And, and she gives another tip I didn't write, put in the uh, lecture. But she says you should, not in front of the person, <laughs> you know, but when they walk away, take out a pen or a pencil and, like, write a little bit on the card uh, some details about the person, maybe about the conversation you were having or the project you were discussing, you know, whatever, so you can remember it later. Because, uh, you, you know what, you might be meeting a lot of people and you get home and, you know, it's just a name on a card at that point. Uh, you don't know, uh, you don't remember enough to uh, follow up. Uh, and by the way, the follow-up, <laughs> you know, you email them, hi, I was, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure meeting you at the conference. You know, I was hoping, uh, you know, I enjoy talking to you about whatever. Uh, I'd like to follow up at some time, or if you'd like to get coffee, lunch, 
you know, you name it. Uh, here's how I can be reached, etc. You know, don't write like four pages. <laughs> Just short and sweet. <clears throat> yeah, ten. Schedule monthly meetups, coffee, lunch. This is kind of the, the ongoing thing. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, stay off the phone. Yes. <laughs> this is the great temptation nowadays. All this technology. Uh, you're in the room, you're a little bit nervous, you're a little bit feeling awkward, and it's just so easy to suddenly get engrossed in your phone when you're just looking at this all, you're doing this instead of, you know, doing the networking thing. Uh, so I would just, you know, keep the phone in the pocket. Uh, don't even take it out. Just just leave that thing out of it. And Because if you succumb to that temptation, you'll be basically uh, wasting your time. I mean, why did you come here to this networking event if you're just going to be looking at a phone? All right, so here's the assignment for you then. Uh, so identify an upcoming networking e event and commit to meeting three people. Start a list of five or six people who you would like on your personal board of advisors. Uh, so there's two prongs to this. So first would be, what is some networking event um, that you could attend? Um, remember, if you need a hint, <laughs> you might remember I mentioned career services. Uh, just go to the career services website at St. Cloud State, and you will see all kinds of networking events at different times of the calendar. You know, depending on when you're watching this, I don't know how much of this will be in person versus Zoom or whatever, but the same, it'll be the same concept. Uh, so just try to identify at least something that looks pertinent to your career. And then uh, also I want you to think about this personal board of advisors. So this list back here, where is it? Yeah, this. So personal guide, personal advisor, full service mentor, career advisor, career guide, role model. And again, uh, Pierce, I think, is 100% correct that there, there, it could be the same person for two or three of these. It right? doesn't necessarily need to be six different people. Uh, but I would think at least four different people. <laughs> uh, so see about that. See if you can start thinking about who you might want as your personal board of advisors. Even if it's people you don't know right now. Uh, remember, this is just people you would like to have, so kind of make it uh, aspirational. Uh, but it is a good thing to start thinking about now. Uh, all right. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions, comments, uh, feedback, maybe you know some pretty good tips for social networking or professional networking that weren't in this lecture, you know, be sure to share those, and I can put them in a future edition of the lecture uh, for the benefit of your other students. But anyway, we'll leave it here, and. Uh, See you next time.